Welcome to Hawaii. We are out in Kailua Kona ahead of the Ironman World Championships. Now this is one of those events that I've heard so much about for so many years. And last year, we were both fortunate enough to come out here and experience it all and start to understand exactly what everyone has been raving about for all those years. Yes, we're lucky to be back here for a second year in a row. We thought it'd be unfair if we had this much fun and didn't share it with you. So we're gonna be bringing you snippets of the build up to the race. Well, that's a little bit of an insight into what the GTN team get up to. I mean, that week leading up to the race, it really does feel like a festival here. The island comes to life. So hang tight, this is Kona Week. This year, um, I'm really trying to make sure I get some runs in before hitting the day, which is hard because we are filming all day, pretty much from sunrise till sunset. Uh, so trying to fit in those early morning runs and try and stay fit and active means getting up at some silly hours. So I was up at five o'clock going out for a nice 12K jog along Ali Drive with everyone else, um, hitting out the sessions, tops off, running sub three minute Ks. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's good fun and got to see the fun run start, Heather taking part in the 10k and yeah, now cracking on with the videos for the rest of the day. How much of a hill can you do it on? <laughs> Well, today's pro bike is a very exciting one because this is the 2017 Ironman World Champions bike, Patrick Langer. This is his Canyon Speedmax CF SLX. We're at Patrick Langer's at the moment. We've got a beautiful garden at the back, started filming it, got partway through it, and the guy started to mow his lawn in the garden next door, so we can't film anymore, so got to scrap it and start elsewhere. And we're on a massive hill on the way up a volcano. Stopped. <laughs> Do we go for it? And also on the top tree, Patrick Langer, Ironman World Champion. Well, today's pro bike is a very exciting one because I have the 2017 Ironman World Champions bike, Patrick Langer. Monday, but it, which is day three, but it feels about like day seven. Um, just filming at the old airport, and as you can see, um, like sweat is dripping off my elbows as we're filming. Um, but my shirt looks good, so. Well, I've just jumped back into the aircon. I'm shooting here because, as you know from Mark, it's pretty scorching out there, and I've actually had to be running this morning. Um, although that was only jogging, because now just working out exactly what pace Patrick Langer runs when it well, ran last year when he ran his record time. And Mark and I are going to have to replicate this and talk at the same time. So just getting my breath back. Yeah, that record, it was set by Patrick Langer at a time of two hours, 39 minutes and 45 seconds, which is 9.85 miles per hour, which the car is setting right now, which equates to 15.9 kilometers per hour. I think it's getting faster, that Pat. In 1908, in 1996, in 1996 with a time of 8.04, and then for the next seven, oh, well, I thought I'd uh, share a little bit of the behind the scenes uh, action here for GTN. Um, it is a very glamorous job, I appreciate that, but it's, uh, it's tough at times. I mean, this looks beautiful here, but this rock is scorching. I am sweating out 
I mean, the sweat is dripping off my elbows right now. Actually, I've gone so far to the point that I'm starting to get goose pimples because I'm clearly not feeling very good. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to remember 101 numbers now at the moment about records broken, which year. We've got Luke Van Leerd, we've got Craig Alexander in 2011 with his 803, Patrick Larry in 2017 with his 80140. Um, we had Dave Scott, Mark Allen bringing it down to 854 in 1984. Um, I don't know how I remember them, um, but it does mean that we have quite a few takes to try and get it. Because all these numbers going around my head, it is tricky, but um, I'm filming in Hawaii, so I can't really complain. Of 8.01 and 40 seconds. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Right, okay. <laughs> So, as well as this video demonstrating to you how hard we find it to remember our lines, this video does actually serve a purpose. As we are lucky enough to be out here filming, we feel that we should do our part to highlight Kona as an event for those spectating as well as those taking part. So, let's start with the subtle and then filter through to the more ridiculous because, believe me, Kona has it all. The Kona Swim Race. Bright and early, athletes, pros, friends and family take on the famous Kona Swim, a 3.8 kilometer out and back course. It's a fun race, but as Heather and I found out, some take it a little more seriously than others. So get ready for a few flailing arms and legs. It's a great way to start the day and a fantastic way to either scout the swim out or to find out what athletes have to overcome. Okay, more on the events later. I suppose we should get back to work. This is the GTN Show. So, I think it's time we did Kona in Numbers. Whoa, <laughs> we're out London. So if tech is your kind of thing, stay tuned for this video. Well, we have gone to Ask the Pros to find out. The foot from here. Okay, uh, Brayden, the other side the here. Just a bit of the content. What is your fastest if you follow the World Championship but you've not had a chance to come out here to Kona, you might have heard of some interesting places and names that maybe don't quite yet make sense. Yeah, some of them have become iconic and yeah, you probably, unless you've been here, wouldn't understand what they are or what you do there. So let us run you through some of them now. This one right here behind us is the Queen Ka Ahumanu Highway, which you've probably heard of it called the Queen K, obviously, bit because it is a say. bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, right now we're filming on the Queen K. It's quite busy right now, but on Saturday, the roads are completely closed down for the athletes to tear it up. Yeah, well, this road basically comes straight out from town. The athletes get on it pretty quickly, and then it heads north parallel to the coast. So, you know, if you're not in a hurry, you can enjoy the wonderful coastline, but it heads straight up all the way to Harvey, where the athletes turn around and head back again. But this is why some of the athletes talk about these well, famous crosswinds because we are so close to the coast, it's very exposed, so they're getting that wind coming in straight off the shore. Right, this is one of the famous points on the course. Behind us is a Lee Drive, and it's the first half of the run where the athletes really get to feel the crowd for the first time in quite a long time after the bike. Yeah, you'll be able to see that right now on the map, and that is, as Heather says, the first part of the course and a bit where everyone has to maybe hold themselves back and don't go off too fast. How did you find it, Lam? Yeah, well, coming down here, I think it's where I saw you, actually, and then you head out along there and there's just crowds the whole way, so you get really excited, and then you come back here again, and then it starts to hit you because you actually, on the run, go back to the Queen K, which we featured on the bike. Yeah, and then after that, they then come back, and this is also going to be part of the finish as they come round this corner behind us, and into that final that stretch. Feeling, I've just got goosebumps as you say that, but actually, as you're coming down here, it is absolutely rammed by the time we get to the finish. There's chalk all down the roads, the supporters are already there waiting for the finishers to come through, and the atmosphere is incredible, and it's literally a few hundred metres to the finish. And then we have this, the dreaded energy lab. Hot, desolate, lonely, no fans are allowed out this far onto the course and from experience with it coming later on in the marathon it can be mentally and physically tough. 
Okay, we are outside the infamous Lava Java Cafe, which you might have heard of, and you might well spot some pros in there. Yeah, they do quite often post pictures of them having a coffee, chilling out pre-race and post-race, and a few famous snacks and menu options in there. Yeah, well I think, enough talking about it, we need to go and check it out. Yeah, well we've just stopped for some lunch in Lava Java. Be rude not to really, wouldn't it? Um, but we do have this menu to choose from. So what are you going to have, uh, Heather? Oh, do you know, I love Andy Potts and I love Pokey. It's going to be Potts Pokey Bowl for me. I'm torn, you know, between the Lean Mean Work Machine or am I going to go for the Hanson Iron Griddle or the Siddle Stack? Oh my God. It's a tough one. But yeah, they've had great fun here putting some of the pro names into some meals. Um, I think I'm going to go for the Lean Mean Work Machine. Clearly works. The next morning and another event, but for this one we had to come prepared with our own GTN pants. I won't try to explain, I'll just let the film do the talking. You probably can't tell yet by our attire because we are hiding something from you, but what are we about to do Mark? We are about to do the <laughs> Kona underpants run. We just thought, hey, why not don our underpants and run around to Hawaii? It seemed like such a good idea when we're back home and we have these custom made underpants, which I am now looking at everyone else who looks ultra cool, matching like tops, bottoms, cool socks. Um, We've gone for the old man tighty whities. Oh, I cannot wait to show you. Well, I, I can. I'm, yeah, that's yeah. why we're still dressed. <laughs> we're keeping them till later. But there is a little bit of history and seriousness behind it, I think. There is. There? So, like... Paul Huddle, Paul and Newby Fraser's husband, actually was one of the founding members. He said that back in the mid 1980s, he just got fed up with coming to Hawaii and seeing people walking around in the shops wearing their Speedos. And, well, I guess the locals don't really like that kind yeah, of thing. So, why. So, so sort of in protest, they set up the underpants run um, to kind of take the mick. Like, yeah. guys, what are you doing? Um, yeah. And it's become a really infamous thing now, hasn't it? I, it really has, and I think we just have to embrace it. There's no other way to do it. Come on, boys, you know we're gonna have some fun tonight, and we gotta look out and watch out because we don't know what's happening now. Come on. Toughest mile I've ever done. Do need to work on my tan a bit, it appears. Uh, looking at everyone else. Yeah. But got solid tan lines though. I mean, People strong, are struggling to beat those, but the tan. I just don't have a tan in the first place to even do the lines. Um, I am slightly concerned though that most of the sweat on me is now other people's sweat because it's been a lot of hugging and people have quite enjoyed the GTN pants or they just enjoyed seeing GTN. I'm hugging sure. in your tighty whiteies. Yeah, with a little uh -huh. bit of. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, been good. Good fun. <laughs> The following few days for GTN were busy as usual, flying around the island as we do recording content for the channel. And as we just saw, events such as the underpants run at Kona have become synonymous with the race over the years. But there has always been one event in particular that I have wanted to try, and I was lucky enough to stumble upon it one night after filming. Hello! Yeah, well we just finished filming for the day, obviously out cycling, and right behind me, they're just preparing for the Kona, the Ironman World Championship Beer Mile. With a difference, we're not on a track, they're doing it around the local park, but we're gonna go and take a look. All right, for those that aren't aware what a beer mile is, we're basically doing a mile run, four laps, starting with a drink, lap, drink, lap, drink, and so on. And hopefully everyone makes it without Chandran. What's going on? Uh, I'm trying to panic, trying to find some kits, see if anyone would shout me some drinks. We are literally just made it in time. Haven't had a chance to go by the shop, so found my running trainers. Could do the top this is a bit tight to run in but 
Might do. I'm going to ask to see if there's any drinks spare. Mark, two seconds ago, you said that you weren't going to do it. I mean, I've always wanted to do it. I just, I just haven't really eaten or anything all day, so this could end really badly. He's a triathlete, they know how to do transition. Come on, Mark! <laughs> well, Pacey's in third, I'm feeling confident for him. I think, have they got one more lap? Or is it one more drink as well? One more, one more beer, okay. I reckon he's got this, he's kind of playing it cool. He's just going to pace it and come through at the finish. Go, 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 go! And it's the final 400 meter run. Look at that, look at that, look at him go. Told you he could pace it. This is crazy. Go, 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 come on, Mark! Because we've just had our winner, but now it is literally a sprint finish for a second. And Mark is pacing. This is Mark Bramwell and Jesse Thomas. Come on, Mark. Oh, he's just lost it. Jesse Thomas powered away for a second. And Mark is home for the bronze medal. Yes, Mark. The next morning was race day. We woke up to near perfect conditions, and the stage was set for records to get smashed. And as the race progressed, we did have a little more filming to do. All right, it's race day. We watched the swim stuff, the Ironman World Champs. And what are we doing now, Heather? We're climbing up a mountain <laughs> whilst the race is going on like a thousand feet below us. Yeah. Just about see it in the distance. I would love to be watching right now, but we've got to crack on. We've got videos to shoot, so oh, yeah. right now. I mean, we're, we're getting a bit of FOMO just when we get out of our bikes. I mean, yeah. Mark's even got his disc wheel out just to show off. <laughs> <laughs> But we weren't going to miss the finish. And I have to admit, the finish was one of my highlights of the year. But look at the clock. The record is about to get absolutely smashed. Oh my God. Oh wow. Look at that. 7.52.39. Can you believe it? Wow. Oh my goodness. Eight hours has just been 100% utterly there really is nothing else like this experience in Coda and well Mark and I have 100% embraced it this year and Loved sharing it with you. Yeah, I can't believe it's all over for another year. But for now, from Hawaii, aloha. Uh, yeah, and if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe. And if you'd like to see our Kona in Numbers video, just click down here. And if you want a little reminder of how the course just got ripped up with those records, we made a video on the Sub 8 getting smashed just here. <laughs>